money. It was a private company. We lost millions of dollars for more than one year uh, and, quite frankly, did not have the funds to continue uh, this program, and especially when our, com our competition would not. More than a dozen years later, Wadler is convinced steroids and drugs remain rampant in the WWE. He is also convinced McMahon could clean it up with a serious drug testing program, which Wadler insists the WWE does not have. Well, certainly it's far, far, far short of where it needs to be. There is a gold standard, and I measure all these sporting activities and entertainment, if you'll, activities against that gold standard, and it's miles apart. That gold standard exists here at the Olympic Training Facility in Colorado Springs, where Travis Tiger heads up the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. Under his direction, athletes are randomly tested and, if caught just once, face a two-year suspension from competition. If caught a second time, they can be banned for life. If there's a desire to have a truly effective anti-doping program and to be as clean as you possibly can be, I haven't seen any excuse that's been put forward up to this point why, why that can't be done. Like Wadler, Tigert believes McMahon and the WWE are not serious about running a clean program. He says look to the WWE's own policy. Performers who are caught are given only a warning for their first offense. A mere 30 day suspension for a second offense you need to flunk a drug test four times before you are actually let go. Then there is the loophole. And that basically says, if you got a prescription, you're clean. Yeah, it, it's just a loophole in my mind that guts the entire program. Um, you know, my, <laughs> my, my three-year-old could drive a freight train through it, to be quite honest, because it's, it's so easy. Like many other wrestlers with the WWE, Chris Benoit found no problems getting a prescription. Authorities in Georgia say one of Benoit's doctors was prescribing a 10-month supply of anabolic steroids to the wrestler every three to four weeks. To his credit, to build a better drug testing program, Vince McMahon hired Dr. David Black, who helped the NFL develop its rigorous testing. Black says he was brought on to clean up the WWE. Were you apprehensive about stepping into the ring with these guys? Whether or not they would truly be serious and follow your recommendations? This has risk, yes. If, the, if I believed the talent were not going to cooperate, if I believed that the WWE was not sincere in this effort, uh, then I've made a foolish decision. But uh, I've listened. I have seen action follow verbiage. Uh, and I seen the determination in Vince's eyes when he's told me, Dave, I want this deal addressed. Since the program began in February of 2006, more than 30 WWE wrestlers have been suspended, including two after our conversation with Vince McMahon. Dr. Black says twice that number have tested positive and been given a warning. Black's program includes random urine tests four times a year, no advance warning. And he says he has full authority with an outside medical consultant to determine if a prescription drug being used by a wrestler is necessary and legal. Black says he doesn't take orders from McMahon, but admits the program is not foolproof. He concedes that some of the huge bodies in the WWE were built in a pharmacy, not in a weight room. we are working towards making sure that all the physiques presented are natural. As a result, am I going to see smaller and smaller wrestlers in the ring? I think over time the uh, impact of the program will be that uh, we will see healthier wrestlers in the ring. Critics of McMahon say that does mean smaller wrestlers. This former employee who wants to remain anonymous sees that as a deliberate attempt to get steroids out of the headlines. When the steroid scandal first happened in the early 90s, and a lot of these guys came off the gas and they got smaller, um, the business also suffered. Now, he says, it's happening again. The death of Benoit, the death of Guerrero, the allegations of steroid use run amok, and a congressional committee asking questions. 
suddenly there are smaller WWE stars, one whose very gimmick is to be drug free. When we come back, you're Mr. St I'm straight edge. I'm straight edge. What the hell does that mean? Halloween Eve, Phil Brooks, known to wrestling fans as CM Punk, arrives early at Long Island's Nassau Coliseum. Wanna, you want to strap this on for me? Since winning the ECW title belt, Punk is more in demand than ever. But tonight, the company owned by Vince McMahon is putting on a pre-free Halloween battle. You got tonight, boy, bro. Casey, see you, bro. CM Punk is literally half their size, but is suddenly becoming a big star, promoted not only for his skill in the ring, but the lifestyle he calls straight edge. It means I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I, you know, I guess I, to a lot of people, I'm boring. Punk's clean lifestyle stands out at the WWE. Uh, this guy is the current extreme uh -oh. championship wrestler. He's getting star treatment. Y'all give it up for CM Punk. Yeah, boy! He's tapped okay. for radio uh, interviews. I, I think uh, what stuck with me from being a kid was uh, the British Bulldogs. <laughs> Even his workouts get interrupted with the press calls, like this one from Germany. You know, you've been at it for 10 years, but your sudden rise to fame at this time has to do with the fact that the WWE wants to hold you up as an example, saying, look, we've got a clean wrestler. I think it was, uh, I don't think that's the sole reason. I think um, uh, it was more, uh, more circumstance, you know? I mean, all this stuff started to happen, and I just happened to be there. While the WWE is trying to put the Benoit story behind it, its wrestlers can't escape uh, like nagging family, questions right? about Traffic steroid abuse. Benoit. John Cena is a WWE superstar, now recovering from an injury in the ring. He doesn't like being asked if he has used steroids. Have you ever used steroids? Absolutely not. This is a crazy question, and it's something that um, it's tough to answer just because of the way society is now. Mm -hmm. The way people conceive things because performance enhancing drugs have got the spotlight and it's a hot thing to talk about. The McMahons, Linda and Vince, insist their drug policy is for real. And the accusation that it's just for show to take the heat off is not true. The federal government didn't suggest that we start a program of this nature. The media didn't suggest that we start a program of this nature. It started because it was the right time to do it. We had the funds to do it. It was the right thing to do. Is the WWE steroid-free, drug-free? I don't think that there's any organization in the world, be it entertainment or be it sport, that can tell you that they are totally drug-free. Evidence of that surfaced just this past September, three months after Benoit's death. 